Hello, everyone. It's me, Michael Anthony Judasissi. Welcome back to All Things Billy, All Things Billy the Kid. And uh, today, an extra special guest. Yeah, I've been uh, waiting for this for a long time. In fact, I talked to this person uh, when I first started the podcast some six long months ago, or maybe five months. I don't even know. Uh, we are going to be speaking to Scott Skurlock. That's right. The Scott Skurlock, great grandson of Lincoln County Regulator Captain Doc Skurlock. And we're going to learn all about his life, how much he knew about Doc Skurlock, how he even found out that he was related, and talk about his acting roles, including the ones where he portrayed Doc Skurlock. So uh, we're going to get to all of that very shortly. Um, again, uh, for those listening in for great insight and uh, <laughs> awareness of when the final trial of Billy the Kid will be released, and still no answer. <laughs> so uh, just, uh, I don't know, tune in again some other time and maybe you'll, uh, maybe you'll find out. But uh, there's speculation runs rampant. Just today, the comments section of YouTube filled up with people saying, Billy the Kid died in 1950 in Heiko. No, he did not. He died in Prescott, Arizona. No, Garrett killed him. And on and on and on it goes. But the answer is, is nigh. And so as soon as the film comes out, you'll know what the answer is. In any event, uh, we're going to take a short break here, and then we're going to get Scott right in here for an exhaustive interview about uh, his life, his family, and uh, his thoughts about good old Doc Josiah G. Skurlock. We'll be right back after this. And we're back with our very special guests. Most, most of the guests are special. Some are extra special. And then there's some that are very special. We call them VSs. And this is the VSiest VSer that I've ever VSed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Scott Skurlock. Scott, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Michael. <laughs> All right. How was that for an intro? I loved it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, a lot of uh, people will know Scott uh, as a friend of mine and an actor. Um, but when people look at your name, uh, especially folks that would be listening to all things Billy, they probably have to do a double take and go, wait a minute, Skurlock, is he? So we're going to get to that. Um, but uh, let's start with the basics of where where do you even come from? Where were you born and where, where were you raised, Scott? I was born in Alaska, but grew up on the East Coast, uh, basically Northern Virginia. Northern uh, Virginia. Yeah, right yeah. outside uh, D.C., lived in Falls Church uh, mm -hmm. and moved to Reston, the little town of Reston. I was the 213th resident of the town, which now has over a quarter of a million people. Wow. Do you get some kind of prize for being in that early? Is it like a pyramid scheme where the earlier you're in, the more you get out of the town? Oh, I wish I did, but I didn't. <laughs> no. Okay. Fair and enough. An uh, interesting point of fact about that is I met the other Scott Skurlock. There's he, another? Yes, there was. He uh, was the Reverend's son, Reverend Skurlock's son. So, and his name was Scott Skurlock, but he had two T's. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, wow. Uh, let's, uh, let's get to that. But, but first I have to ask the question that everybody's wondering. So is this Scott S C O T Skurlock directly related to our, uh, our friend, uh, the famous doc Skurlock, uh, Lincoln County regulator, captain, et cetera. Do, are you a direct relation? I am his great grandson. Great grandson. And do you know the lineage, how you get like through who? Can you can you talk us through that? My father was the fifth of six sons of uh, Josiah Gordon Skurlock, who was the oldest son of Doc Skurlock. Oh, so so Doc, who was also Josiah, named one of his sons Josiah as well. Yes. 
Got it. Okay. His oldest so, son was named after him, and and he was my father's father. Got it. Where did where did your grandfather live? Was he in Texas, or or, or did he move to the East Coast? Well, you were in Alaska. Was he there? No, he he was in uh, Texas. You know, he he was Texas born, Texas bred, and all the family was Texan. Uh, my father and his younger brother, my uncle Andy, uh, were both Army Air Force during the war. And so they sort of moseyed out of Texas and uh, neither one of them ever went back. Really? Wow. OK, well, so we've established that uh, that Doc was your great grandfather. Now, did you always know this growing up from Alaska and moving to Virginia? Did you always know you were uh, related to an Old West legend? <laughs> no. Uh, as a matter of fact, when Young Guns came out and there was a character named Doc Skurlock in it, I used to joke around with my friends that, oh, yeah, you know, I'm related to him you know, as a joke. And you didn't know? No, I I had no earthly idea. I knew very little about my lineage. My father never talked about it. Uh, His brother, my uncle Andy, who was also in the D.C. area at the time, never spoke about it. And The only time I ever met the family was when we were transferred, when my dad was transferred to Japan, driving across country. We stopped for a couple of days in Texas. I saw my relatives and that was the last time and never thought anything about it. So, no, I I had no earthly idea that I was related to them. Did do you think that your your uh, your uncle and your dad didn't talk about it on purpose or did it just never occur to them? Well, I can only assume that it never occurred to them. You know, I I knew that they had four other brothers. I knew their names. I knew they were in the oil business, but I knew nothing about the Skurlocks per se other than Uncle Andy and my dad. Hmm. So you drive through Texas on your way to the West Coast. to, And so did you live in Japan? Did I get that right? Yeah, we lived there for a couple of years when my dad was stationed. Oh, wow. Um, and so when you get to Texas, there's a whole bunch of Skurlocks uh, that are all over the place. Uh, does anybody there go, hey, look at this? And they, you know, pull out their finger, you know, forefinger and thumb and they go, psh, 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 let's play Doc Skurlock and Billy the Kid. Like, does Not- anybody have an inkling to mention that to you? Nope. Uh, never heard a word about it. Uh, met my grandfather. He never said anything about it. Uh, nobody mentioned a word. And your, your grandfather was the son of Doc Skurlock. Right. Never said a word. Nope. Wow. Okay. Uh, I want to get back to this later because it, famously, we know that once Doc moved to Texas, he really never talked about the Lincoln County War. And I'm wondering if that just kind of filtered down through the family. But so Young Guns comes out 1988. Did you, you saw the film? Do you remember seeing it for the first time? Uh, no, I don't. I, I probably didn't see it in the theater. I probably never saw it until, you know, it was on TV sometime. But, you know, it, everybody was talking about it. You know, it right. was a fairly decent movie that people spoke about you know it had young stars in it that were up and coming and so no i i don't i never saw it in a theater gotcha so at some point so were you aware of the doc skurlock character before you saw the movie just because people talked about it and Kiefer sutherland obviously was a you know big star at that time uh no i didn't know anything about it you know and as, I, as i said you know i heard that you know Kiefer was playing doc skurlock And, you know, I played along and said, yeah, you know, he's my relative. I didn't (laughs) say he was my great grandfather. You know, I figured it'd probably be a great, great, Uh great, but. That's, that's terrific. Um, So you and I have a little something in common in that your relative was played by Kiefer Sutherland 
And the only reason I saw Doc Scurlock uh, and Young Guns was because the girl I was dating, Eileen Mangano, was in love with Kiefer Sutherland. I mean, way more than she was in love with me. And she demanded that we go to the theater. I was not a Western guy. I knew nothing about, I didn't even know it was a movie about Billy the Kid, but I had zero interest in seeing this thing. And uh, only because of her making me go, did I kind of get hooked and seduced by the story of Billy the Kid. So uh, we have that, uh, we have at least that in common. Okay, so you see the film at some point, you see Kiefer Sutherland, Doc Skurlock. When does it occur to you to ask, did you, do you ask somebody or does a relative reach out or how do you find out you actually are related? I saw a family tree that my uncle Andy had put together and following it down, saw uh, Josiah, Gordon, parentheses, Doc, in parentheses, Scurlock on it. And that's how I found out. Was it, um, I would imagine most people listening would go, oh, wow, you know, that's that's cool. It must have been like a, like a, a chilling moment. Was it that big, like trumpets in the background? Or was it like, oh, well, there, there's, there's that guy? I turned to my wife, because I remember it. And I said, because I had told her that, you know, I was related to him (laughs) jokingly. And I said, I really am and pointed it out to her. So it it was a gotcha moment. You know, it, it was the first real tie that I had with the Skurlock clan, you know, and, and, it was very interesting seeing the uh, the family tree. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, okay, so now you know you are a direct relative. You know you're the great grandson of Doc Skurlock. Does that prompt you to do anything? Are you interested in finding out more about him? Is there any oral history in the family? Do you do some studying, or do you just go, "I'm related to the guy"? Cool. Like now, I got something good to say at parties. Oh, there is a tremendous part of the Skurlock clan that really focuses on Doc Skurlock and, you know, following through on his heritage and his history and and working things through and, and saying, this is what really happened. This is not the way it was in this book or in this movie, you know, setting things straight. But no, I, I have a uh, cousin, uh, Mike Ferris, who really is the family historian. Uh, she and uh, I can't remember his name, but he is related also not only to the Skurlocks, but to uh, Tom Brady. Oh, wow. What a, what a pair. Yeah. <laughs> The captain of the regulators and the captain of the uh, of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I said the name wrong. Let me think again. I screwed that up. It was, oh, this makes it even better. Okay. He's related to Pat Garrett. Oh, Pat Garrett. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Pat well, Garrett, not, not Brady, the sh- sheriff that got shot. Oh, okay. I, I, the Sheriff Brady. I thought you said Tom Brady. I thought, wow. I, I did say Tom Brady. <laughs> that's what, you know, I'm in Florida. I got you. Yeah. Well, you gotta, you gotta have him on the brain now. Okay. <laughs> so now you've, you're, you're on the inside, right? It's like, uh, you know, the, the family has kind of opened itself up and now you know all about this. Um, what did you, what did you, do people seek you out? Like I, I'm not related to anybody. <laughs> famous like people would just love to forget my family but the people track you down and go hey you're a scurlock are you related to doc uh my best friend who is here in saint augustine he used to be in colorado he did and the way i met him was his girlfriend worked with my wife she said that had told him about my wife and said the name Scurlock and he asked her he said is he related to Doc Scurlock and she said yes so he drove down 
from Denver to have breakfast one morning with us so that we could meet. Wow. And ever since then, we've been inseparable. Got it. So you're in uh, Florida now, but yeah. I met you uh, when you lived here in New Mexico. And I got to tell you something. I, I feel like I'm an idiot. I, most days I feel like that. But, you know, I had known you. We had chatted uh, uh, a, online a couple of times. We had a mutual friend, an actor who, you know, we had talked about. And it never occurred to me that Scott Skurlock, like the name just never registered it just went completely over my head that it was, you know, Doc Skurlock. And, you know, I, I know a little bit about Billy the Kid. It should have struck me. And only when I began casting uh, my very first project, Back to Billy, did somebody say, oh, you should talk to Scott Skurlock because he's related to Doc. And I said, duh, you moron. How did you not even think about that? So, but how did you get to New Mexico? What brought you out there? Uh Directional drilling. All right. Directional us. drilling as a means for tertiary recovery of oil and gas from depleted oil fields. Sometimes you ask a question and you, you, you wish you hadn't. But <laughs> <laughs> so this was your business? Uh, I was coming out to assist a gentleman that wanted to start a directional, biz- directional drilling business and I ended up being his design guy and designed the tools that we used out in the oil field. Got it. And so New Mexico is where you land. Um, Was it lost on you at that point that that's where Doc had, you know, kind of made his fame? Oh, yeah. You know, I moved out there in. I moved to New Mexico, I think, in 78. Oh, you were here for quite a while. I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah. Oh, no, I I moved in 78. And, you know, at that time, I didn't know. So it was substantially later while you were living kind of in the shadow of the Lincoln County War and and one of the captains of the regulators. You don't even know that, you know, you're and and you're going around New Mexico and people aren't bumping into you going, oh, let me see your business card. Scott Skurlock, son of a gun. Nobody says that all that time. No, but my buddy. Right. Drove down a second time from Colorado and said, we're going on a road trip. And it was Billy the Kid days down in Lincoln. So we uh-huh. went down to Lincoln. First time I'd ever been there. And he had a lot of fun with it. You know, we'd, we'd be in line to go into some place and he'd wander up to the uh, <laughs> park ranger and say, see that guy back there? That's Scott Skurlock. Does the name Skurlock mean it? He's Doc <laughs> great grandson and you know we were treated like royalty there so (laughs) oh that's so great now you arrived in new mexico in 78 so how how long how much later was this oh this oh when i went down to lincoln for the first time uh Uh, right before i left there I, i guess about three years before i left which was so about 2016 Wow. So all that time living right here in the middle of the history, did, did you know the history of Billy the Kid even before the the Young Guns thing? Like, was it was it even a thing to you or? No, nothing. It, it meant nothing to me. You know, I'd seen the pictures of him standing there with his rifle. And that was about all I knew about Billy the Kid, other than he was buried someplace in the state. But that was it, huh? Wow. Yeah, that was it. I had I had no knowledge of Billy, the regulators, anything. Nothing. Um, okay, so you have been down, but you took more than one trip to Lincoln, if I remember right. Is that correct? Yeah, and and it was really wonderful because Micah, the cousin I mentioned, mm-hmm. my uncle, Uncle Andy, who at the time I think was either 99 or 100, he still traveled. And, you know, once every year, year and a half, they would go to Lincoln. So she told me that they were going to be in Lincoln. And I drove down to Lincoln and reconnected with my uncle, who I hadn't seen in, oh, probably 
60 years. Oh, that's so great. That's so great. So that's, uh, you, you've had a, a couple of these uh, trips to Lincoln. You've met the family. Is there, I'm assuming there is, because you mentioned it earlier, is there a different impression of Doc inside the family? Are there some inside stories that we don't know that aren't printed in the books or don't show up in the movies? He was a real family man, you know, bilingual. Uh, Spanish was more his native tongue than English. I didn't know though, that. Yeah. You know, his, his wife was Spanish. Uh, and she, just as an aside, she traces her lineage back to the first, one of the first 16 conquistadors that came into the state of New Mexico. Oh, wow. So, you know, long heritage on that side. But no, he, you know, basically they spoke Spanish. Really? How cool. Um, so I'm on the uh, Doc Skurlock Wikipedia page, um, and it it uh, gives his stats. Born January 11, 1849, died July 25, 1929, 80 years old in Eastland, Texas. Um, nationality. And then knows, uh, it says occupation. I'm going to read each occupation to you. You tell me whether you agree or not. First one, gunman. Yeah. Okay. Outlaw. No. Cowboy. And that, that really comes down to your definition of outlaw and who was right, who was wrong. He sure. did things that were illegal, what would be considered illegal, but they were what was going on at the time. Uh, cowboy? Oh, definitely. Vigilante. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Um, so yeah, let's go back to the outlaw part because, um, I, you know, there doc was known at least, you know, to my reading as, as a younger man, as kind of a scrapper, you know, he wouldn't take a lot of crap from people and, uh, and you probably couldn't in those days cause they'd run you right the heck out of the West. Um, but he, he otherwise lived a relatively, unspectacular life up until the Lincoln County war. He probably would not have been remembered and he wouldn't have been in a movie, uh, but for his partici participation in there. Right. Um, but, but, you know, there were, there were minor crimes and those things. The real thing that, that outlawed the regulators, at least my, my belief and perception was uh, when they killed Sheriff Brady and uh, the, you know, that that took them from regulators legally appointed uh, by the justice of the peace to now these are just kind of avenging angels that are going to do, um, you know, whatever they want to do um, was I, I'm I'm trying to remember. But was Doc present when Brady was killed? Do you remember? I believe he was. Yeah, I'm well, checking. Yeah, uh, I, I believe that if he wasn't actually there with a gun in hand he knew that they were going to be there with guns in hand mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't look to me like he was i don't remember his name specifically but i think he was not there but it, i think it was a plan that was hatched by all the regulators so i'm going to put you back in there i'm going to i'm going to push you back in the family tree to be doc now you're there with the regulators you're in the middle of this whirlwind that's going on was it the right decision do you think it was the right thing for them to do at that point to just rid the rid the county of the sheriff? In my opinion, based on what we know, yes. You know, if 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 in fact he was tied in in any way, shape or form to the earlier murder. Then, yes, they were out to revenge. They, you know, were basically at the beginning of a war and. That sure was the second step to it. And that's that's the way war goes sometimes. So I'm looking at one of the pictures of Doc. This one purportedly taken in 1877. So he's uh, not yet 30 years old. Um, looks like looks like he's got kind of lightish brown hair. He's got a mustache, but looks very light. Um, do you know like what color hair? I've, I've seen some dispute about this because he looks like a lighter skinned, lighter haired guy. But um, do you know what color hair he had? No, I don't. But 
you know, all the sons had a medium brown to brownish black hair. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and uh, described as five feet, eight inches tall, weighing 150 pounds with brown eyes and dark blonde hair. That's what the that's what the description says in Wikipedia, you know, whatever, whatever that means. Um, Doc got shot in the mouth uh, yep. <laughs> down in Mexico, knocking one of his teeth out, coming out the back of his neck without any more serious damage. He returned fire and killed the man who shot him. Can you believe like <laughs> these guys? Oh, you shot my tooth out and the back of my neck. I'll kill you. And then let's go back to play cards. These guys were like Iron Men. They shot out two. Two teeth. Yeah. Oh, both of them. So was he missing? Was it the both front teeth? Yes. So he had none. Billy had too much. Uh, so <laughs> between the two of them, they, they made a, they made a heck of a pair. Um, so Doc becomes captain of the regulators. Um, and that's uh, after, uh, oh gosh, now I'm going to forget. Uh, Frank McNabb is killed. And uh, Doc has control of the group for a little while and right up until the five-day battle. Now he's not in the... Uh, He's not in the the uh, McSween house when it's being burned out, um, but but he you know kind of runs the show then. And after the the war is kind of over, there's really not much left to there's nothing left to fight about. Tunstall and McSween are dead. Dolan's bankrupt. You know the the, the town is in ruins. Um, and Doc picks up, and uh, he and Charlie Bowdry move to Fort Sumner. Um, where he stays for a little while, but then he goes to Texas. And so any, do we know why? Was it just to escape the, you know, the war or any indictments or revenge? He wanted to live. Ah, good answer. He, he knew that if he stayed, someone would come get him. So he gave his gun away and left. Wow. And did, do I hear right that doc, you, you said he gave his gun away. Like he never owned other than a shotgun for hunting, he never owned another firearm for the rest of his life. That's my understanding. Wow. And also my understanding is that he did not talk about the Lincoln County war. Didn't talk about Billy, the kid, those kind of things. Is that the family history as well? Is that what the family believes? Yes. And do, we, do we know why? No, all I, all I can imagine is it's like, you know, the greatest generation. They didn't talk about World War II. They didn't talk about what they did. Uh, and I'm assuming that it, it had something to do with that, that, that when he left, he was done with that life. And, you know, he was going to be a, a teacher and clerk and not be Doc Skurlock anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I could imagine that. And so uh, he dies in 29, 1929. Uh, Walter Noble Burns goes around the country interviewing people for his book, The Saga of Billy the Kid in 1925. I, I don't know, but I would imagine that Burns would say, gosh, if I really want to get somebody that knew Billy the Kid, who's alive? Oh my gosh, Doc Skurlock, who not only was a friend of the kids, but he employed him, he directed him, those kind of things. I wonder if Burns ever even reached out um, and if, you know, if, if Doc took the letter and, you know, threw it in the fireplace or anything, any, any family insight into something like that? No inclination. No, no I, don't I, know. I have no idea. But we know for sure that Doc never talked about the war. So the, the chances of him talking about it to anybody would probably be about nil by that point. Yeah. My, and my uncle Andy said, you know, he never spoke about him. And, you know, Uncle Andy was probably 10 when Doc died. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so he knew him. He personally knew him. He grew up with him. Right. Uh, but he never gave me any indication. And I haven't heard from any other family member, particularly Micah that he ever talked about it. Wow. Um, I, I would, uh, whoops, let me just get this out of the way here. Got something that popped up on my screen. 
I, uh, gosh, what was my question? I was just about to say that my computer interrupted me. Oh, the, so uh, Walter Noble Burns book comes out in 26 and it really reignites the legend of Billy the Kid. Um, who was basically forgotten up until that point. The Lincoln County War wasn't a big deal, certainly wasn't studied like it is today. Billy the Kid was just some, you know, some little known outlaw. But that book ignites the the fascination of the of the public. And Doc is alive for another three years after that book comes out. I know we don't know, but I just wonder, did he ever read it? Did he ever see it? Did somebody talk to him about it? Like, what would his reaction be that all of a sudden, all these people are so interested in something that he's been, you know, just desperately trying to forget or move on from? Um, to me, it would be, I wonder if he was amazed, like going, what in the hell? Or <laughs> why do they care about this? He was probably uh, amused. <laughs> yeah, maybe so that uh, that people would spend so much time and energy i wonder if he could if we could summon doc back now what he would think because that was one book and now we're hundreds of books and films and tv series later and uh and, and it just never ends it's i mean we're we're talking about it right now so crazy um doc uh is in the cemetery in eastland texas right um, have you have you been there no, I, I never have. I've been, you know, I've seen the pictures of the headstone uh -huh. uh, and our family reunions, which Anna Maria and I have never gotten to yet, are held in Eastland uh, every year or every two years whenever, you know, they're done. But no, I've never been to Eastland. And mm -hmm. I don't remember going through Eastland when we uh, went to Japan. I don't know where we went in Texas. I was seven, eight. Gotcha. Well, let's go sometime. Let's go. Uh, let's go uh, have, pay our respects and talk to him. Um, OK, so movie portrayals. Uh, Young Guns obviously was Kiefer Sutherland that portrays Doc. Young Guns 2, uh, Sutherland. I mean, uh, yeah, Kiefer Sutherland comes back again. Um, the, the problem, of course, with Young Guns 2 is they made some historical mistakes in the first one and they couldn't really fix them. So Doc gets killed in a shootout uh, at the Rock House at Stinking Springs, but he was long gone for Texas and he never got killed by Pat Garrett or anybody else. Right. Uh, it was just father time that eventually caught up to him. Um, <clears throat> interestingly enough, the uh, there's a scene where the regulators are riding through a, uh, uh, they're, I, I think they're in old Mexico or some village and they're riding through this Mexican village and you see Doc has a, bandana across his face the you know kind of like outlaw style and his hat pulled low and the reason is that uh that was not key for sutherland he he had his child was being born that day and so they had his photo double just ride behind a disguise basically and they kept the camera off him as much as possible yeah um in the john wayne film chisholm doc scurlock is mentioned as one of the people that Billy the Kid is recruiting in his, you know, fight against Murphy, and some actor portrays uh, Doc Scurlock, but there's it shows basically a half dozen of Billy's gang in the final shootout, and it never uh, it never designates which one is Doc, so we never know who else played Doc on film, except for actor Scott Scurlock, yeah, who, <laughs> who has portrayed Doc a couple times. And uh, so the first time you and I got to work together was on my uh, little pilot, uh, Back to Billy, and you got to portray Doc as a, uh, gosh, 1945. I mean, Doc would have been, he would have been over, so he would have been 95, 94 years yeah. old, something like I that. I sure wow. looked good for him. <laughs> yes, you, you, yes, you did. Uh, so th did you... You obviously had a script, but do you prepare or do you just know enough about him from being in the family to, to decide how you're going to portray him? I talked with a friend of mine, well, my cousin, Micah, mm -hmm. uh, and I tried to talk to my uncle Andy, but, you know, he wouldn't talk about it. Uh, but, you know, Micah really wasn't any help. So I relied on my director. Uh -huh. Gotcha. And so, but you went to your uncle and said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm portraying doc, you know, give me some tips, tell me about it. And he just said, did he say, no, I'm not talking about that. Or did he just like, what did he do? 
it basically we were on the phone and he said uh i can't tell you anything he said i'm not an actor i don't know what to tell you i can't give you any insight to him wow you know, something along that line and we moved the conversation along <laughs> and that was that huh yep. so you got to portray doc there in uh, one of the key scenes in that show but then you came back thank you very much by the way because you know i was uh, <laughs> i was the least experienced and talented person on all of those sets um but uh, we did my first feature film which was in their own words billy the kid in the lincoln county war and you portrayed doc uh you know in his uh in his older age in an, essentially in an interview talking about uh, talking a little bit about Billy the Kid, but this was unscripted. So now you really had to decide who Doc was because I didn't tell you, you just showed up and whatever you said was what Doc would have said. So any different preparation in that than it was for the first one? Yes. I actually read as much as I could, you know, and tried to get as much detail as I could about what he did when he did it uh, so that I could at least attempt to come across as being Doc Scurlock. Mm -hmm. Well, you did wonderfully. I don't know if you remember the outtake, which I've never released, and I probably wouldn't <laughs> without your permission. But at one point I asked you, I said, hey, okay, well, at the end of this, why don't you get up? And walk out because Doc was angry, didn't want to talk about you were clear. I don't want to talk about this. That's it. <laughs> and you, you know, I said, you know, walk away and, and say something. And so you walked out of the aisle and you started walking away from the chairs and you turned around and you flipped. I think you flipped the bird and said, F you. <laughs> do you yep. remember? Do you remember? That? <laughs> <laughs> I, it, I, it almost seems like, you know, Doc back in his formative years, that's probably the kind of thing he would have done. <laughs> so I think you probably captured him pretty well there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too bad that couldn't stay in. Yeah, that was my high moment. It was a great moment. Uh, okay, so I have had people because you know your picture has been on the uh, the uh, different web pages and groups uh, or uh, Facebook pages for the films, and I have people that look at you and go, "Oh my gosh, he looks just like Doc!" Uh, like I can't believe it. Do you see the resemblance? Uh no, I don't. But in in the picture, the still from, in their own words, you know, there, there's a slight resemblance, you know, with, with, oh, and by the way, the glasses that I wore mm -hmm. in both Back to Billy and uh, in their own words were his. That's incredible. I remember when you, you sent me a picture of them. And you said, I got, the, who, who gave those to you? Who had been, I have no them? earthly idea. They arrived in a package. Oh, you're kidding. No return address and a note that said, thought you would like his glasses for the film. Oh my goodness. See that part. I didn't know. Yeah. I, I, I have no idea who sent them to me. I'm assuming that it might've been Micah, but you know, she never has said anything about it. So I don't know who sent them to me. That's crazy. So is, I, I wonder, I don't think we'll know, but is, is it somebody that said, hey, I want to help you out. But just like Doc, I don't really want to talk about this. I don't want to get involved in it. But here you go. Channel him through his glasses. That's cool. Do you still have those? Oh, heck yes. Yeah. Wow. That's really great. And the next time I play one of your films with doc as doc i'll be wearing them <laughs> very cool hey we're with actor scott scurlock we're going to come back right after this and talk a little bit more about his film career and upcoming projects and we'll be right back after this message all right and we're back with actor scott scurlock the great grandson of the Famous, infamous, I'm not sure, both probably, Doc Skurlock of the Lincoln County War. And uh, we were talking about your acting roles, and uh, you've done a couple for me, but you actually were in uh, another film. I have, to, I have to share an anecdote here because uh, we have a, a, a film coming out, uh, 30 Seconds in Hell, where you portrayed another legendary uh, character of the Old West, uh, Old Man Newman Clanton. 
Um, and uh, you did really just such a wonderful job. I can't wait for you to, to see the whole thing. But I, I want to tell everybody, Scott is the kind of guy on a movie set that, I mean, first of all, he'll do whatever you ask him to do, but he'll, he'll really go for it. And so while we were setting up a shot, because Newman, uh, old man Clanton, the way he died is he got killed, ambushed, and, <laughs> and fell into a fire. Uh, we were setting this shot up and this creating this little fire pit, and we would CGI in the flames. And Scott's over <laughs> offset on the side. And rather than like fall to his knees and fall into this pit, you know, kind of use his hands to break his fall, he decides he wants to just pitch face first right into it. And he grabs this big trash can, big rubber trash can, and he's falling and he's yelling at me, Michael, look, I can can't even say it. I can fall. I, I don't have to break my fall. The trash can will do it. And he goes, watch. And so myself and Carrie Brooks is a cinematographer watching. And Scott, you just did a complete nosedive. That thing stopped you a centimeter from the ground. I was afraid your face was going to get split open. What in the heck were you thinking? <laughs> well, reality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been reality. All right. And our insurance would have loved it. I'm assuming that the times before when you practiced, it worked a little, maybe it was a little better, a little safer because the one I saw was like, oh my gosh, we're, we're going to have to call an ambulance out here in the middle of nowhere. Only did it that once. Oh, really? Oh, so you, I see. I was under the impression you tried this and you no. had perfected it. And that's why you were yelling like, okay, look, I've done this. And it was, look at great no, I, I, I figured that, you know, it was a big 55, 60 gallon can that it, <laughs> it would hold me. And it did. My nose didn't hit. Oh, and for, if you if you want to see it in your mind's eye, imagine a guy that just locks his arms to his sides and stands straight up like, and he will not move his arms. And Scott just pitches totally forward onto the trash can, hits him about, I don't know, maybe waist high and his face goes down and, oh, thank goodness you didn't get hurt. Holy cow. Uh, but, um, so you no one ever said I was smart, Michael. <laughs> well, no one's ever said that about me. That's probably why we work so well <laughs> together. <laughs> Um, so you portrayed uh, Old Man Clanton, um, the father of Ike and Billy Clanton, the, the famous uh, shootout uh, gunfight at the OK Corral. Um, prepare any differently for that because it's scripted? Do you even read up on Old Man Clanton or do you just go by the script? Uh, I, of course, went and looked at uh, Wikipedia or whatever that's called. Mm -hmm. And what I really wanted, you know, you can't tell what the guy was like. But I, every time you see someone portraying him, doesn't look anything like what he really looked like. Right. So I tried to grow the 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 sideburns down and the hair up, you know, because he wore it, and you know, so there was that sort of preparing. There really wasn't any preparing about the man himself. The uh, the dialogue in the script handled all that really gave you good insight into them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to say that uh, I've seen a number of Westerns since my first viewing of Young Guns. I think our cast drank more whiskey, or at least what would pass for <laughs> whiskey on film, than any <laughs> other movie I've ever seen. And the number one drinker was Old Man Clanton. I mean, you'd finish a, a drink and you'd be there talking to Destiny, our little prostitute the saloon keeper and you'd, you'd be two finger waving come on give me another one let's go <laughs> and just drink after drink after drink um do you want to was that really whiskey you were drinking or do you want to keep that a secret uh i'll be honest it was iced tea iced tea <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah but uh yeah you you certainly put a lot of it away so and never called for uh to you know to, to have to take a, a restroom break so kudos i to thought you. about it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so how did you get into acting from verdict sideways drilling or whatever the heck it was? How did acting become a thing? Well, it was after I retired from my real job and I was sitting around doing nothing and heard about this stuff called background. So I didn't know any better. I decided I was going to do some background acting. So, you know, I spent my time in the, cattle 
room and yeah, holding area. Yeah. And the casting director for uh, background called me and said, have you ever done any photo double work? And I said, no. And she said, would you be interested? And I said, sure. So she said, okay, show up here at this time. And it was the ho- the Pyramid Hotel. Went on in and, and said, okay. And I got called over and, and there were three or four of the guys there that were going to be, quote, auditioned. And walked on up and the director was there, the first AD, the first AD stood up, had me stand up and walked around and looked at me and looked at me from every angle and had me move. And then he sat down and turned to the casting director and said, okay, we'll, we'll use him. And it was the photo double for Sir Patrick Stewart. Oh, wow. For Logan. Uh huh. Oh goodness. I had no, I didn't even know that, that you had done that. That's great. What an experience. And so I spent my time because Sir Stewart wasn't there. He had filmed all his stuff in New Orleans before they moved up to New Mexico. And so I spent all my time feeding lines to Mr. Hugh Jackman. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, you know, he'd say, well, maybe you should say it this way. Why don't you try saying it this way? Or, you know, I like the way you, you know, just feeding the lines to him so he could react. And that's how I spent my time. And as we're at the rap party, he came up to me and said, how long you been acting? And I said, I don't act. He said, well, maybe you should. (laughs) And that's what started it. That's cool. Wow. What a great story. So you've been in a number of films and and every time I talk to you, like even when I talk to you to (laughs) coordinate this interview, you say, well, I've got these two films I'm working on doing the table read here. And then I'm going to be going there. Like, how do you stay so busy? What's the secret for someone, whether they're retired and want to get into acting or they're, they're, you know, just out of high school or college. How do you, how do you find all the opportunities? Uh, I don't have an agent, so I, you know, book myself. I use backstage, I use actors access, uh, and look at some of the Facebook pages. And if there's a role that looks interesting, that I believe I can capture based on the character description in, in the calls, I'll submit for it. And so, you're, you're getting quite a bit of them. Oh yeah, I'm I'm busier than I want to be. <laughs> That's great, and you know I I have heard you know because I have not been in the business uh, you know all that long, but I've heard oh gosh there's no there's no roles for older actors and those kind of things. But that's uh, I mean you can prove that that's not true. I mean there's if you're willing to hustle and go out and find these opportunities, there are roles out there really kind of for everybody, huh? Yeah, and and the interesting thing that I do is if I see a role that I really like, I'll submit. You know, I actually got a role that was written for a 30-year-old woman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I submitted, I said, if this person can be considered this way, I'd like to audition. I auditioned and got the role. So I submit for what interests me, regardless of really what the character description is. Uh I mean, character, uh, age, gender, anything, you know, if if it sounds like an interesting character, I submit. Yeah. So speaking of characters, um, you uh, graciously allowed me to write you into my uh, Back to Billy book in the series, the first book is Back to Billy, but not as Doc Skurlock, you know, not not as somebody portraying, but I actually got to write Scott Skurlock into the book um, in a uh, strange twist of time. And for those of you that have read it, you'll probably know it's toward the end of the book. Uh, Scott Skurlock delivers an important message to our hero or anti-hero Martin Teebs. Um, and for those of you that haven't read it, maybe you will. But I have to ask you, Scott, is there, do you now possess some 
80, 90 year old envelope with a message that's been sealed for all that time that someone has told you and your family, Hey, you've got to find this guy and get it to him, you know, by this date. Is, is that a real thing? Are you, are you holding on? Are you the keeper of the Skurlock family secret? Can you hear that? <laughs> no, I didn't hear what that was. Oh. <laughs> I'm waving it. In front oh, of the really? microphone. So you do have it. I do. And, and you've got to deliver it. That was such great fun to write. And what I did for those listening is I, I would write to Scott and say, Hey, first of all, can I include you in the book? Like I'm going to use your real name and your real likeness and identity. And, and as always, you always just, yeah, sure. You know, go ahead, do what you want. And then I would send it to you and, and make sure that you were okay, you know, with that. Um, but it really became kind of a, the final key for how this book ended without doc back in 1940 doing what he did. And without Scott in 2021 or whatever it was doing what he did, the book couldn't end. It would have just gone on forever. So thank you for allowing me to do that. Is it weird to see yourself as a character, like even in print? I think, well, first off, I greatly appreciated it. And yes, it was, different uh, if I hadn't become an actor or trying to become an actor it might have been even more thrilling but you know becoming a character and reading scripts and doing doing as much of that as I did it was just it was neat it was really great it was a real privilege to be in it. Well, thank you. So I have, uh, obviously we have a, a full feature length script for Back to Billy. I mean, I'd love to be able to make it. And the only guy that could play Scott Skurlock is Scott Skurlock. So if we can get there <laughs> someday, um, I'd love to actually film that scene with you kind of hesitantly walking up the walkway with that letter in your pocket about to break some news to a guy that you don't even know what the news is, but you know for the, you know, the, the last 80 years, your family history has told you, you got to deliver it and you're the guy. So I hope we get to make that someday. Oh, so do I. I, I think that would be so much fun. Now, if, if you do, are you going to have to study up on Scott Skurlock to figure out how to portray him or do you think he can pull it off? Oh, he's pretty damn one dimensional. So no, I'm not going to have to study hard. Hey, I had one question from earlier. You said the pastor's son, Scott with two T's, Skurlock, back in uh, Reston, Virginia. It, is that a member of the Skurlock clan? Uh, distantly removed. Uh, he is on the family tree, off in the distance. But uh, he, he himself was pretty infamous. He was called uh, Hollywood. He was, okay. As a matter of fact, he was called Doc Hollywood. He was a bank robber. Oh, no, you're kidding. <laughs> up in Seattle. And, would you know, he was called uh, Doc Hollywood because he would wear these masks and everything. And they kept robbing banks and robbing banks. And he was very infamous up there. And, you know, people loved him. Uh, and then he uh, got caught. Went into a trailer is where they finally caught him and shot himself. Oh, wow. That's how that story ended. But yeah, yeah, you know, he, he was, you know, if you look him up, you'll see Scott Skurlock with two T's and it's not me. <laughs> it's not you. You're, you're here live and kicking. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, okay. So uh, I, these are questions that I uh, like to ask all my guests. Um, and this is your opinion. Unless maybe, you know, maybe you have some inside info. Uh, Billy the Kid. What happened to him? Did he die July 14, 1881? Was he Brushy Bill Roberts in Texas hanging out with Doc until their later years? Was he John Miller? What happened? I believe he was killed. That night in Fort Sumner? Yes. Is he buried in the cemetery there or is there something else under the ground? A saddle, box of rocks, something like that? I believe he's probably buried there. You think he's there? Okay. All right. Well, we'll never find out because they'll never let us open it up. No, that's for sure. And uh, finally, if uh, if you and I could uh, 
<laughs> could borrow Martin Teed's little time machine and take a trip back just for one day back to 1878 Lincoln, somewhere in and around the Lincoln County War. Would you want to go? And would you want to be yes. your great grandfather? Hell yes. I want to go back to the croquet game. Oh, you don't? <laughs> see, see if that's really Billy out there. See if it's him and see who won the game. What would you say to Doc? Like, you know, you show, I, obviously, you know what he looks like from the pictures. Uh, what would you say? First thing. That he did good. He did he good. He raised a bunch of good kids who raised a bunch of good kids who raised mediocre like me. <laughs> oh, man. Scott, I have had such a great time uh, talking to you. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, any films uh, coming shortly that folks should watch out for and where can they find them? Uh, we've had several released uh, on Amazon. The last, I guess we've had three or four features that were released within the last six months. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, we do have one that is in distribution and in the theaters in Japan. Really? Where I'm, you used to live? Yes, I'm, I'm international now because, <laughs> you know, it's actually being shown in theaters. Which film is that? uh it's called death ranch death ranch yes okay so if anybody's going to japan and <laughs> wants to go to the theater go see scott scurlock in death ranch otherwise if you just type scott scurlock s-c-o-t s-c-u-r-l-o-c-k in amazon prime video uh you'll see all the movies that he's in and uh watch for him soon in uh portraying uh, newman old man clanton in 30 seconds in hell from mankind productions and yours truly see if you can count the number of drinks that he had whoever gets closest without going over will get a special prize they'll get we'll get an, an autographed scott scurlock napkin or something <laughs> a shot glass <laughs> yeah there you go shot glass scott thanks so much for joining me gosh and being uh, so uh, available with your time i appreciate you buddy i hope to see you again real soon i'll and, be back anytime you need me all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to that. And for that, we're going to let Scott go. We'll be right back after these words. No, oh, man, isn't he the best? I really enjoyed the heck out of that. I love talking to Scott. I uh, miss seeing him around here. He left New Mexico, gosh, I can't remember, three years ago or so. Maybe four, I can't even remember, but... Uh, that was fun. Uh, after the interview concluded, uh, he and I got to talk a little bit about some future projects and stuff we might be able to work on together. And uh, I, uh, I, I, I appreciate Scott so much because he was really one of the first people in the, you know, in the film business that <laughs> that befriended me, took pity on me, uh, you know, helped me out, and uh, and of course agreed to you know to, to be in. Uh, in my projects. Uh, so I, uh, gosh, I, I don't know. There's, there's no way I can repay him because probably without somebody like him early on, you know, that's that, that gave me some good, you know, positive feedback and said, Hey, you, you know, you can do better here, but, but you're doing fine. Um, I, I probably wouldn't have even continued. So thanks buddy. So there it is the uh, great grandson of Josiah G. Skurlock. Scott with one T Skurlock and uh, the uh, a very interesting that uh, a good portion of the family just doesn't didn't doesn't talk about Doc uh, and probably didn't talk anything about the Lincoln County War and I agree with Scott that Doc probably wanted to put the whole thing behind him maybe he was uh, fearful that somebody would come and get him maybe he was embarrassed by his past uh, but um, whatever it was whatever the 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 first hand information that people probably today would love to have about billy about the war about brewer i mean doc was in the middle of all of it he was there from the very start before the war started right until the end uh and uh we'll never know we'll never know because he didn't want to talk about it i wonder how i wonder if he ever saw billy again um i wonder if in that you know those times he must have seen him at fort sumner he when he and bowdry lived there but but doc pulled out for texas and i wonder if ever 
he saw Billy again. I know that Doc was around Tascosa, um, and he was uh, like a, uh, a postmaster or something. And Billy frequented that area with stolen stock. Um, but uh, I don't know. Did they ever run into each other? Did Doc ever give him any fatherly advice and say, hey, kid, you know what? You're headed to an early grave. Take a lead from me and get the hell out of here. Or did they never? Did they even like each other? You never know. I mean, you, you want to think so. You, you look at young guns and you go, oh, well, you know, Doc and Billy were buddies, but who knows? I'm sure all those regulators weren't the best of friends. They happened to work together. So, oh, well. Those are things we're not going to find out, but the things we will find out, we'll continue to investigate here on All Things Billy. Thanks for listening into this episode, and we'll get you uh, next time around, whenever that may be. See ya. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.